Okay, so today's state of change is going to discuss the um, things that are coming over from Korea. The PvP changes, the game changes itself um, that are coming over from Korea side. And uh, obviously we want to address the late night discussion, um, that the, the late night dev talks that we've been getting, right? I, at this point, am convinced that BDO was made into a PvP game by accident. That the lead dev, who in this case is right now is Jay, developed this game as it was with all the systems in place with the intention of designing it so that uh, it is PvP friendly. But I think his intention was to make a PvE based game. Either that or his desire for what his game was changed over time. Now we are aware that Jay played his own game, right? That was part of what caused a lot of these recent changes. He's been playing his own game. He's been having experiences. And one of the things that he had mentioned was um, that the game, that he felt like his guild was bullied and they couldn't do anything about it. And then did you notice that our changes to Garmoth happened? And what was Garmoth for all of us here in NA? It probably was the same way in Korea. Garmoth was the central hub for PvP. World bosses before uh, were also the central hub for PvP. You would go to world bosses, not because you wanted the boss loot, it's because you wanted to fight players. And it became a, a it was a danger zone. It was a spot where people would go in there and seek battle. Then at some point they changed the world bosses to be more uh, friendly. They changed to be more pro player friendly, right? Where they were, um, they were, you know, to save you time, there were safe zones. You know, the, the, the world bosses themselves were not dangerous at that point. Um, they made it so that uh, you could just go there, get your loot and get off. And at that point we started seeing a rise in the boss halts. And then they created nightmare mode, which was good for the game, but not good, I think, overall in the scape in the scope of things because people weren't bringing their mains and they were too they were too tough when they first came out right so i feel like this game was made a pvp game by accident um or the direction of the developers changed so that they now want it to be a pvp game um or pve game and no longer a pvp focused game um as i said the developer plays his own game but he is the most out of touch because he views it from the lens of a solo pve player i feel like he's developing the game right now um, with a solo PvE player in mind, not a PvP player. That's why we're seeing a lot of the changes that we're seeing, things like uh, the Marty Realms and making the game more grind friendly. And the, instead of nerfing PvP, instead of nerfing the way the world functions, they should just create PvE servers. Make a PvE server and reduce the drop rate to 250% instead of 300%, right? That way there's a, there's a drive to go play on other servers, but if you really want to be left alone, you have somewhere you can go. But no one can attack you on, regardless of Guild War status or flagging or whatever. If, BV, if BDO is a PvE-focused game, then here is my thoughts. What is the point of Crimson Desert being a standalone game at that point? Crimson Desert is supposed to be a PvE-focused version of, I think, BDO. It's an updated copy of the game. But it is very much PvE-focused. It's going to be party... It's going to be a party game from what, it look, from what it looks like. It's going to be very Diablo-like in terms of you go in with a party, and that's the game. It's not an MMO in the tradition, traditional sense of MMO. Crimson Desert does look really good. I agree with you, Afi. However, my point is, if that is a PvE-focused game, then why are we turning BDO into also a PvE-focused game? You're going to have two versions of the same game. One of them is going to be much later, develop much later, or much later in its development cycle than BDO will be. Right. Uh, so we also have the Arsha changes coming before the new year. Right. The Arsha changes are going to make it so that you can fight every player in Arsha regardless of the guild. Right. You can't see who you're fighting. It won't show the names. Their names won't appear in the kill feed. Right. You're, but you're going to be able to fight players on Arsha. You'll be able to fight your own guildmates, and you'll be able to work together with other players to fight players. However, platoons are out. That's going to be a non-platoon content. Right. You're going to fight in 5v5 in parties only platoons don't exist on arsha so you can only create groups of five some people think that's bad some people think that's good i personally think it's good and i'll get into that once we get past the topic points right and then lastly i want to talk about why party combat for me is the win so i want to talk about the first topic with you guys now we've already discussed these right we have gone over them i'm convinced that bdo was made a pvp game by accident what is your thoughts give me your input the Archer thing is a bad idea. Look what happened to Shadow Arena. 80% of people were hacking. True. Save that thought for when we get over the Archer com comment. I want to talk about whether you feel like this game was developed to be a PvP game at first, or if it became a PvP game incidentally. Because I feel like this game, either they created it with the intent of drawing in PvP players, 
or they accidentally made it one of the best PvP games in the, on the market. I could see it. I've been around long enough to see the old 2017 BDO, or you haven't been around long. Enough. So the old 2017 BDO was amazing. You would go like if you it, let's say when Kazarka spawned, right? Zarka was a world boss, and world bosses were not safe zones. You could fight players at world bosses the entire time you're fighting the boss. So a guild effectively could hold down an area where like Kazarka is and kick out all enemy guilds from participating in the boss fight. In fact, that was a major point of contention with guilds. There would be guilds be like, your guild will never do a world boss again. So every Mudster fight, every uh, Kazarka, every Kuranda was a battle zone. Guilds would go there to GVG and you would have sometimes hundreds of players that would show up to GVG at a world boss. People weren't going on alts because if you went on an alt, you would just die and never get loot. They had to bring their main because they had to fight against other players, which is very PvP friendly, very PvP unfriendly. I don't know why Arsha isn't like that right now. I feel like the PvP was intentional, but Jay seems like he just reluctantly or recently within a year or less starting to play his own game and the direction of the game started to change. I agree with you, Stride Noms. I think that he started to play his own game, realized that he didn't like the PV PvP content and is now changing it for everybody, thinking that from the scope of his own lens, that the game is not good because of his per his uh, perception of the game. But his perception of the game isn't an objective one, right? The problem, in my opinion, is that he has executive power over what changes will eventually get into the game. If he decided, I want this game to be a PvE game, it will be a PvE game, and that's it. There's no recourse to it because there's no one that can, no one has enough power, executive authority to challenge that decision to make it so it doesn't arrive in our, on our shores or in our game. So he has that power. I don't like that these changes are so sudden. I think it became a PvE game. It, but the thing is, even if it became a P P PvE game, boy, is it a good PvE game in the scope of what a PvE game actually is? Is grinding in circles or doing boss rushes exclusively a good PvE game? Because I don't think it is. I don't think it's enough content to be a PvE game. Back then, tagging didn't exist. Uh, like, just getting as far as having an alt was way harder and not really possible for bosses. That's also true. In my opinion, much like Ultima Online, it was originally designed with PvP the way it was designed. But just like Ultima Online, the player base and culture changed over time and open world PvP games have become much less popular over the last 20 years. So it's evolving like Ultima Online did when they added Tremel. Ladies A, I agree with you on some, uh, to some extent. I do believe that players nowadays are much more PvE focused than they are PvP focused. However, there is still a large sect of PvP players that were drawn specifically to BDO and stayed on it. Most loyal player base core are PvP players because there's nowhere else for us to go. There's nowhere else that's competing with what BDO offers. So, you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like BDO is the only, it has the cornerstone on the PVP market and they're giving that ground up. All another MMO has to do to come over and overturn BDO at that rate is just copy what they had. But let me give you a perspective. Let's say World of Warcraft, getting away from their Alliance faction system, created a Guild War faction system all the PvP players would return to BDO, or would return to World of Warcraft. They would go right back. There's no reason that they wouldn't. That, and of course, the graphics are horrendous and it's a tab target game. It's not a true competitor for BDO, in my opinion, but that's a different, that's a different conversation. I feel like it would be much more PvP century. Otherwise, Red Band and Overworld wouldn't have been a thing in 2015 forward. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, Red, Red Play has always been in the game, though. Uh, it's like if you give me executive power and nerf everything other than sailing. Yes, exactly right. You cannot change the entire game based off of your own experiences. So I feel like the developer playing his own game, right? We, we, we talked about a little about this, the developer playing his own game. I feel like he's now developing the game in the sense of what he wants to see in his game and not what the community wants to see, because a lot of what he is asking for lies in the face of what the community's, the veteran core wants of out of their game. When you were a new player in BDO, your wants and needs were very different than when you became a veteran player in BDO. Does anyone here have a moment where they thought a certain way about a certain topic and then that, that their way come thinking completely flipped when they became more experienced in the game? I feel like there was a lot of that. I, I even I had a lot of that. I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of perception on what PvP was that morphed over time because my perspective change just from experience. 
making a game that you like equals making not you know equals making the game worse for everyone i agree Krilloris, but this again goes back if bdo a BDO is already PvP focused. Why not make your PvE focused game Crimson Desert and make your PvP focused game Black Desert Online and leave the game as it is? I used to think grinding and no PvP was even more nope. Yeah, I mean, BDO is very much... Why do people grind on BDO? They grind so they get more powerful, so they can bring those, that power to the fights in PvP. That was my motivation behind getting strong in this game always. It was never because I just really liked running around in circles and killing mobs. It was always because I wanted to become more powerful so I can go fight in more, you know, difficult fights. You don't think you don't think Crimson Desert will be any close to BDO. It's going to be a solo story game. Yeah, but it's still going to have multiplayer. So that's my point, though, Langley, is that if it's if BDO is moving in the trend of I'm going to make this a solo MMO, because that's kind of where we're going with this. We're moving in a solo MMO direction. We are literally becoming Crimson Desert before Crimson Desert launches. Because, except minus the story, because the story just isn't that good. Without PvP, there's no major motivation to gear up. Exactly, Zervi. And I feel like that's the case because the PvE content offered in the game is not strong enough on its own to stand up as a title. If you compare the PvE content in this game to, say, PvE content in Final Fantasy XIV, is BDO a substantial um, competitor? Uh, the problem with PvP is cap between players gear. If PvP in low and mid spots were hard, capped, and not crystals or artifacts affecting the fight, it would be skill checked as it should. Now I can go grind for mirror Mox with 600 gear score and tagging with players with 700 gear score. It ain't fun at all. It used to be five. Uh, it used to be five years ago, when fun when the cap wasn't huge. So I think high gear players should be able to fight around the end game spots now that they want. Or how they want, but not go kill lower gear score players like imps. That's the reason why I don't like PvP anymore as I used to. Arc he, or Arsk, here's what I'm going to say about that. There is a lot of game modes, especially now, that offer a form of content that is that is gear capped. You have Node Wars that's gear capped. You have Arena Solaire that is gear equalized, right? If I personally, and amongst, and I feel like other players too, feel like World PvP is the only real form of PvP because it involves the character that you have been building over the course of many years. Right? You've been building your character up and you want to take them into the world. It's like it's like crafting uh, a unique machine and then taking that machine into combat. It's not the same as you going into oh, look at this thing just floating at me. That was so weird. It's not like it's not the same experience as you going into an equalized battleground and then having that experience. It's just completely different. So keep that in mind that we're talking about two different methodologies, right? Having gear caps in the open world, I think, would be awful. I think that would actually be terrible. That would actually kill World PvP, because people don't want to play with somebody else's gear. They want to play with the things that they've been working towards. Um, I know that's what I want to play with, right? If I wanted to play with equalized gear, I'd go into Solaire. Or you go into an RBF that has gear caps, or you go into a node where it's all gear caps. From what I heard, uh, Crimson Desert has no multiplayer. It does have multiplayer, though. I, I think it's going to have some party party-based multiplayer. Um, I think, too, the two can coexist together. Definitely now, especially with Marnie, there wasn't a need to remove some of the PvP features. Crimson Desert seems more like an Elden Ring in its kind of purpose. Yes, Stride Noms, but that is what makes Crimson Desert a good-looking PvE game. Because it looks like Elden Ring. Because the PvE content in that game is actually interesting-looking. All they have to do is make BV BDO PvP-focused, and then they can focus all their PvE energy into Crimson Desert. Because the community doesn't want these changes. They're not asking. I remember uh, going into cadres and killing mobs for 20 minutes and saying, I'll never do this. I was a casual life skiller back then, and I saw Arsha and AOA event, and I said, okay, that looks cool as hell. I need to do that. I need to get gear. Exactly. That motivated you, right? Getting stomped by higher gear players made me want to get stronger. Same. And I feel like that's the same for a lot of players. When you've got your, 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 you know, your tail pushed in, for lack of better words, we got your tail pushed in, right, by players. You wanted to get stronger. If I fought a warrior who just killed me super fast, I was like, man, I can't wait till I have gear like that guy. I want to be like that. 
or I, if I got if I fought somebody, he just straight up tanked my combo. I was like, bro, I can't wait till I got gear like that guy. That's amazing. It does excite you. It does build a fire in you that makes you want to get stronger. Uh, not even like sometimes I want to grind. I'll think about think of a time a higher gear score player bullied me. Time to pop us and turn on that loot scroll facts back. Uh, it was a running joke for a long time that I absolutely refused to grind, and that's why my gear never got better. After joining Kinsworn, my gear started increasing substantially, and I actually ha feel proud of myself because I actually have motivation to play the game. And that ties into changing the PvP. Without PvP, are you motivated to play the game? Let me ask you a different question, guys. If BDO removed PvP from the game altogether, would you still play? I'm not sure I would. If they remove, I'm not talking about Node Wars, though. I'm talking about they remove World PvP completely from the game. There's no World PvP anymore. Would you keep playing BDO for the RBS, the Arena, Solaire, and the Node War content? Just see yes or no. Uh, I have no, I have, I'll give you guys time to answer that one before I go on. Read in Daryl's com comment. Nah, I'll go to New World at that point. A reminder you may be taller but i'll pvp you irl i can lift you no, no you're not no you can't <laughs> you're, you're like a pocket-sized human i could just i can put you in my backpack and carry you around actually take one <laughs> you might be able to lift me up but i can bench press you <laughs> uh the question is if bdo removed world pvp completely from the game would you continue playing it I'm talking about, would you continue playing BDO strictly for Node War, Siege War, um, Solaire, and RBF content? Would that be enough to keep you in the game? Or would it be enough to drive you away from the game if they removed all forms of Alt-C or GVG or, or World PvP content? Because I feel like that, that to me is the line. I'm done. I, I would be done. I, I can't say for certain without actually being in a situation, but I, I can kind of predict that I would be done. I would look for another game. It is a rough question, but I, that's what I want you to think about. If they remove PvP from the game, there's no world PvP in BDO, would you keep playing it? Isn't the whole point of gearing to do PvP? I agree. I, 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 just, I don't hear anyone saying yes. I want to hear a yes or no. Just a straight yes or no. Would you keep playing BDO with no world PvP? You would play, still play the game, just not as active. Would you grind in it? Would you engage it for the PvE content? I probably wouldn't. I like the gameplay loop, but I don't think I'd play it anymore. I think I would just go find a different game that does it similarly. That's a no, okay. That's straight. Thank you, Seth. I appreciate that. Mm, I would play it for a bit and probably ha move on to Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars 2, which has better PvE, to be honest. I agree with that. I agree with that take one. Yes, there would be more... There would be a point where it wouldn't matter anymore. Yeah, so you get to a point where you're basically done with the game, bud, is what you're saying. I'm too stubborn to quit, so yeah, I guess. No, I'm not that. Uh, if the game goes nuts, I'll, I'll leave it. I mean, straight up. Uh, you have to vote somehow. I left BDO for a year at one point, and I'll, I, I would do it again without PvP. Uh, I mean, I'm a life skiller, so yes, I'm the minority in this chat. Okay, Burger Bash, that's fair. No, no issue with that. It seems like there's some mixed opinions, too. There's some yeses and there's some noes. I've already started going back to Warframe. Depends on the player and what their interests are. Yeah, I'll buy that for a dollar. If they kept the Arsha channel AOS in tournaments, best in class, I'd stay. I don't think... I'm not talking about... Arsha would be out. I'm talking about no PvP. No world PvP. So Arsha would be out. AOS would be in. Tournaments, best in class? When was the last time they did a best in class tournament? Fenrir? We're talking about years ago. It's supposed to be annual. We haven't done that in a long time. We've done best in guild. And there would be an end that would be more defined than it is now. And that is, I think, the point for me too, Mud. There would be an end. There would be nothing to do at the, after, after that point. Yep, I'm talking about overworld PvP. Open world PvP, they removed it completely. All open world PvP. They would still have AOS, they'd still have... Um, RBF, they'd still have Node War and Siege War in its current state. I don't think, I don't know anyone who is really enjoying themselves in Node War and Siege War right now. There's like a handful of people comparatively. Wouldn't be a reason to gear then. The whole game would be based around your gear equals P. Yeah, but those game those game modes are capped and equalized in some in some capacity. 
w w is RBF enough of a reason for you to continue getting gear? It, it's definitely on the downtrend, Smitty. But my perception is not the is not the game's um, full reality because there's more things that impact it. Like Marnie realms make the game look more dead than they are. Okay, um, I'm gonna move on from this part, and I want to talk about this last part. Uh, why party combat on Arsha is a win? We go to Arsha right now by ourselves. You guys see this every day on stream. This is a win for me. I, you guys, I want you. You have your own opinions, and I want to hear them, right? Um, I'll go to Arsha by myself, right? And I'll go and pick a fight. And a player can't win in that fight, so what do they do? They call for more people. You see that all the time, right? And before you know it, it becomes like a, you know, 1v3. And then I'll call in three people and it'll be a 1v6. And then I'll call in six people and then it'll be a 1v6v20, right? So the fight escalates and grows. But if the parties are locked to five-man parties, I can't call more than five people without potentially giving myself a handicap, right? I don't think that's a bad change. I think what's going to happen is if I have a party of 10 people that all want to fight on Arsha, we're going to do it Node War style where some of us will fight and we'll have to kind of fight around each other in a way that's intelligent and be very situationally aware. Therefore, giving the players in the smaller group an opportunity to effectively fight back. I think that'd be really exciting. I think that's actually good for the game. Yeah. Could you imagine 60 or four or more people all in separate five-man groups fighting each other? How crazy fun that would be? I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think that's a great, I think that's a great change. If you just in, imagine it in that scope, right? You have your group of five, you're trying to control an area. I think it changes the dynamic of how PvP flows on our show. And people are upset because like, well, without platoons, we're not going to have large scale fights. I think you're wrong. I think we'll still have large scale fights. I think they'll just be different types of large scale fights. Instead of a platoon holding down an area with 20 people, you'll have five people holding down an area, another five people holding down a different area. And then people will be colliding, uh, groups will be colliding into each other to try and take each other out. I think that's going to be really exciting. Yeah, it, exactly. I think that'd be really fun. Uh, if you have a differing opinion, if you think like platoons are going to ruin or a platoon, platoons being removed from Arsha is going to ruin Arsha. I'd like to hear that opinion. Group content in the form of PvP, aside from practice, Solari, or GVGs and Node Siege, it's smaller scale PvP that allows more potentially uh, allows more potential, especially for some classes specialized in smaller scale. I agree. I think Arsha combat really looks the best in about a five person group. Because after that, you're not really like, no one's really doing a fancy combo. We're just like dumping damage into a pile. Like, that's really all that's happening. It's like you're getting ran down by a platoon. That's not really that interesting. There's nothing like remarkable or, I guess, noteworthy about a group of 20 players just blowing up a group of five. Like, that's not fun. Gut run down by a, a platoon uh, by a platoon of Cho or five five people with five people or stride noms. It could be five members of Cho Nation, five other members of Cho Nation, five members of Digital, five members of a mixed group all fighting each other. I think that's phenomenal. I don't really get what the changes with the plot changes because you see everyone in your guild on the map. You will not then a seal. That's one of the changes that's coming. One of the, so. To fully describe the changes that are being proposed for Arsha, and we're supposed to see these before the new year. So we will be seeing these in the next month and a half. The full scope of changes is you'll be able to fight your own guildmates on Arsha. You won't be able to see player names in the kill feed or in game. You won't know who they are. You'll just be fighting them. So that reduces the possibility of harassment, right? And you can't have part, you can't have platoons, parties only. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. But some players are thinking that that's going to actually kill the game. I think that's really exciting. I, this is one change I actually do agree with Che on, is that having a group of 20 people running around in Arsha does kind of kill PvP in Arsha, because yeah, that group of players could wipe out an area, but no one wants to fight them either. They just leave. Any chance they would do a thing like New, New World has gear scaled down or up, depending on how high or low gear score you are? Maybe, Smitty, but... With BDO, there's too many eccentricities that don't exist in New World. Human damage and accuracy and evasion and HP modifiers and percentage-based damage and slows. It's just, it's too much. It's too much stuff. 
to really scale properly. It's not designed for scaling, is my point. That's why Node Wars, you have tier one cap Node Wars, right? And people create specialized gear for the caps because of percentage-based damage and modifier damage. So instead of just improving your gear, they actually have to craft a separate set of gear for the Node War. And listen, for all you out there that are getting real close to your screen, no, no kisses, all right? Look, here, mask up. Don't try and kiss my lips just because they're close. All right. God damn it. <laughs> All right. But so who thinks that Arsha changes the plots being removed from Arsha is a bad thing? Like, who's upset about that change? I don't know, the Arsha changes are made, I'd be on Arsha more because I can be ran down by a plat. You can't be ran down by a plat. I agree. I think I think it'll actually encourage people to want to come and screw around on Arsha. Only Zergers will be upset about it, and they are. And that is part of the problem, is that they actually are a, a large sum of people in this community. I think it makes the fights more fair. I think it makes them more fun. It'll make them a little less predictable. I have mixed feelings on it because I like fighting with my friends, but I also hate big Zerg fights. So 5v5 will be chill as hell. I just don't like the idea of hiding feeding na hiding feed names, fighting guildmates, minimap stuff. I do t I do like those things because I think it makes it less targeted. I think you're just it's more about the fight than the result, and that's really exciting for everybody. But also, I do feel like if you think about it, Gwen, the times that you are engaging in a zerg, just look at how you actually use your time. How many times are you actually in a platoon of like twenty people? Versus how many art times are you in a platoon of like five to ten people? I feel like the five to ten people platoon the size group is a lot more frequently seen than the large size group. So if you think about how your time is being used, it doesn't really impact you that much. You will be able to make a yes with the change. Yes, you can kill your own guildmates. So infighting begins. I'd only want to keep cha Arsha changes to ruin Arsha or keep Arsha plots, Lie Like Chaos. For us who are only in it for the fight in the first place, this is just changing. These just changes for us based on the shitters who we're targeting. It's mildly upsetting for that reason. Eh, I don't know. I think I feel like some of it is for competitive fairness. But yeah, I don't know. That's uh, that's my state of change video. Uh, if you guys have any more discussion you guys want to have on that topic, um, I'm interested to hear it. But I feel like that was uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to get out, what I wanted to discuss overall.